Today is World Biodiversity Day and I'm joined here by my great colleague Nune Scheuer, Head of Quality Environment and Security here in Musk's Fleet Management and Technology Department. And why don't you just kick us off by, by speaking a little bit about why biodiversity is so important, both generally but, but also for, for us in Musk. Yes, um, for sure. Um, so, as part of our commitment to being a nutty virksomhed in Mærsk, we do a lot of things. And uh, part of this is also the responsibility that we have to take action when it comes to, uh, to biodiversity. Mm. Uh, we do this because we want to positively contribute to the society that we're part of, but also because we can see that it matters to our customers, and it matters to other the key stakeholders that we have, uh, both internally and externally in Mærsk. Yeah. But I think we also see some environmental trends. We see that the impacts we have on the world around us and so forth. Could you talk a little bit about why we see biodiversity as something that we perhaps need to address as well? So biodiversity is a topic very much on the rise. Uh, we have seen now for, for decades a focus on climate change, which is a, a key aspiration and ambition for us. Um, biodiversity is very much linked to climate change. It's, it's difficult to, to split the two apart. Um, and that's also why everything that we do on biodiversity is very important for us, that that is in line with our decarbonization uh, ambitions. And yeah, as I said, it's a topic very much on the rise. It's a complex topic. We're still learning a lot about it, uh, but it's something that uh, we need to do something about at global level. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you've already alluded to it a little bit, but biodiversity is also a topic that is not only emerging, but also cuts across many of the other ESG categories and important topics that we work with as part of our ESG strategy today, including our decarbonization ambitions and goals. Could you elaborate a little bit more on how you see biodiversity play out uh, for us in Musk? For sure. So maybe I can talk to some of the different things that uh, that we are doing. So first and foremost, we are actually uh, already doing a lot of things, mm -hmm. both on ocean side, but also on, on land side. We have many uh, good initiatives uh, ongoing. So if we are to sort of split it into two, then you could say there's the initiatives that we have ongoing right now. Mm -hmm. And then there's the work that we have ongoing to set direction and define Merck's ambition level on this topic and also make sure that we have the red thread across the initiatives that we take on uh, across ocean and land side. And now we're sitting here also in front of the, uh, of the aquarium. So uh, in line with that, uh, let me just start with the things that we are working on also in fleet management technology on our vessel side. Mm -hmm. We know that when our vessels transit the ocean, it has an impact on, on the marine life. We are looking into how we can better understand that impact and also to mitigate it. Mm -hmm. And that comes in different forms and initiatives. One of them is uh, our focus on protecting whales and other marine life. So there are these uh, protection zones in different parts of the world. Some are voluntary, some are mandatory, but zones where we know that whales come to feed and breed. Mm -hmm. And here we make sure to either slow down as we transit through, or we avoid these zones altogether. And we have incorporated these different zones that we have worldwide into our procedures. So it's shared with the vessels to give them concrete guidance, but also we use our digital route planning tool as a sort of geofencing so we can actually plot these data points into the system, thereby uh, alerting our colleagues on the vessel whenever they are coming uh, nearby a zone where they need to, to be cautious. So the management of our biodiversity, potential biodiversity impact is actually embedded in the way that we operate our business and part of how we operate in a responsible business on the ocean side, but also on the land side. And I think that's a, a very important point you bring out there, Frederik, that, uh, that it's something that we do mm. as part of our business. Mm. It's also part of the value proposition that we offer to our customers. Yeah. So it's not, some, it's, it's not an add-on or something you, know, you have on the side, it's, it's actually an integrated part of the way we do business. And could you talk a little bit about, because it's, it's clear to me that it's, it sounds like we have an obligation to actually do something about it, because we can see that there are, is a real challenge. And uh, you talked about doing nerdy virksomhed, for example, it's part of our values and our purpose to actually uh, do good in the world while doing business. So is that the main driver for, for the uptake in biodiversity in Mersk, or do we also see increasing expectations from the external environment in this area? It's many things that are driving our focus and our commitment on this topic. So if we're just to take, you could say, the, the, the highest level, 
is of course the state of our planet. And that's where it begins, right? So without going into too much detail on that, there are these uh, planetary boundaries that have been defined by scientists to have, you could say, an international baseline to, to compare how human impact on the planet has actually played out. It talks about uh, state of the oceans, landside, and so on. And it's just to say that the state of these different parameters that we're looking at when we talk about planetary boundaries, we're not in a great place. Um, so, so that's also why there's international agreement that we need to take action, both societies and businesses jointly. So that's where we start. And then we talked about, yes, our commitment as a new DVXM mm -hmm. to actually contribute positively to the society that we are part of. We know it's important for, for our key stakeholders, for our customers. It holds a lot of value to them and they also want to do good and have a positive uh, contribution here. Then, as you alluded to, we also have regulation mm -hmm. coming on the topic, both on European level, but also actually at international level. If you look at the framework that are being built, both because they will be defining the expectations to companies going forward, mm -hmm. but also because they actually give guidance and direction to companies and on how they are to approach and tackle this topic. So it's multiple reasons why we have to do something about this and are focusing on it. Maybe I can just elaborate a little on some of the different initiatives mm -hmm. that we have ongoing. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, you could divide it into two overall, you could say, themes, what we are doing today, the initiatives that we are running, yeah. and then the plans that we have to define our ambition level, and you could say strategy as such on, on biodiversity. I mentioned uh, some of the focus areas that we have on the ocean side. Underwater noise is another uh, topic that we're focusing on. It, of course, uh, links a lot to the whale issue we also discussed before. So we are really focusing on that and how we can learn more about the noise that our vessels generate and how we can mitigate that. Then uh, if we move to, uh, to the land side, as you mentioned, our decarbonization ambitions, right? One of the things that we're, of course, very focused on is to ensure that the, uh, the green fuels we'll be using in the future, that they are produced in a sustainable way where we don't have a negative impact on the environment that surrounds us. That's also part of our biodiversity ambitions, and we have a, we have a super team uh, dedicated to that in, in decarbonization. Similarly, so we have a lot of initiatives on land side as well, mm -hmm. where we are measuring the impact that we have, uh, the impact from our activities on the land in terms of water consumption and, and a number of other parameters, so we actually uh, can make informed decisions about our activities on land side. I can certainly hear that a lot of activities is already going on right now to mitigate our potential impacts we have on, on the environment, on biodiversity. But I guess we also have an opportunity to actually positively contribute to biodiversity in various ways. And I don't know if you could elaborate a little bit on, on that. Yeah, for sure. So our vessels are uniquely positioned globally. We are present many places in the world. You could say others have difficulties accessing. For instance, in, in, in our oceans, in, in many areas where we are present and actually able to collect data points where it's possible for us, but difficult for others. And I think one of the initiatives that we have ongoing is we have installed weather stations on our vessels that uh, it's set up in an automated way. So they collect a number of different data points about weather, which is then shared with meteorological uh, institutions um, across the world. Again, for climate uh, science purposes and, and research. Another example is, uh, is again back to the unique presence of our vessels globally, that we are part of different research initiatives where we collect samples, for instance, from the air, again, also for, for climate related uh, science purposes. We also collaborate closely with, uh, with universities, uh, again, to all the time challenge ourselves to learn and to see how we might improve, among others, to reduce our environmental footprint, but also to see how we can use our presence to, to share data and collect data and share that uh, for science. No, I think it's good to hear that we are uniquely positioned to actually also contribute with science to, uh, to solve some of, the, uh, some of the issues that we are absolutely looking into. And if we stay on that track, uh, we've been talking about the importance of biodiversity in nature, and we've been talking about a little bit about how we deal with it, what we do currently. But if we look a little bit uh, ahead to, to our future ambitions and uh, where do we see most plays a role in the future, could you elaborate a little bit on, on yeah, that? Yeah, for sure. So I think, first of all, it's important to emphasize that we are already doing a lot of things across ocean, across landside. We have many initiatives ongoing. As mentioned, we, are, we have a lot of support science uh, initiatives ongoing, supporting ocean and climate science and so on. So we are already doing a lot of things. What we are looking at now is to um, 
create um, a, a position on biodiversity where we actually define our ambition level for MERSC across and which is aligned across ocean and land side. So the setup that we have is, uh, is that the different initiatives are run in the different business areas where there's most knowledge and, and locally, which we believe is the right way of doing it. But of course, we want to make sure that we have a clear framework that, that creates the red thread across the initiatives that we take on and also the ambition level that we define. So this is a, um, a work ongoing, both between the two of us, but also a lot of other good colleagues uh, working to define that. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it also reflects where we are in terms of biodiversity that is still under development in terms yes. of how do we actually measure our impacts? What are the frameworks and standards we need to use and so forth? How do you see that play out? We will uh, yeah. contribute and use those upcoming standards and uh, yeah. And, frameworks. And, and I actually think it's, it's a good point you bring up there because on climate, there's agreement on what it is that we're measuring. We're measuring greenhouse gases, we're measuring CO2 emissions. Um, on biodiversity, it's more complex and there's still more subjectivity in terms of how we measure it, what are the parameters, what are the metrics we measure. So it is a more uh, immature area. It's also more complex and it varies across ocean and land side. So that's also one of the things that, that we'll definitely be looking into and defining uh, the direction that we want to go in. And then to just touch on one of the important topics that will become even more important going forward uh, as we scale up uh, the need for green fuels. And uh, as part of that, we will use a lot of uh, biological materials to produce those green fuels, a lot of biomass and so forth. And we do already now have policies in place in terms of what feedstock we are going to use and so forth. But could you tell a little bit more about how we will prepare for the scale of green fuels in terms of doing due diligence, and making sure that we are not significantly harming the world around us as yeah. part of that? So, of course, ensuring that the, that the green fuels we'll be using in the future are produced in a sustainable manner is a key concern for us. Mm -hmm. We have a dedicated team focusing on doing the needed life cycle uh, analysis to ensure that it is indeed produced in a sustainable manner. But our responsibility, of course, also goes outside uh, just, you could say, the environmental aspect. Mm -hmm. It also covers our social obligations, both to protect uh, uh, human rights um, and, in, in general, the societies that we are part of globally. We have a broad commitment and also a broad ambition to how we impact the societies that we are part of. Yeah. And we've been talking about the natural climate solutions as part of that and uh, perhaps building a portfolio around uh, natural climate solutions. And I guess an important element of, of implementing that program will also be to look at the impacts on the local communities and ensuring that it's actually sustainable what we do. I guess you would very much agree. And yes, I very much agree that, that is, uh, that's, that's also something uh, that we need to focus on. To me, I think the, the, the point here also to say that we're doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not one thing that's going to fix the biodiversity challenge in front of us, right? We need to come at it from many different angles, supporting science, having specific initiatives that we want with, define direction, share our knowledge, share experience, but also opening up our organization to knowledge and expertise from the outside. Mm -hmm. Because I think if there's one thing which is clear and which also became clear from the, the, the climate challenge that, that we are facing is that we can't do it alone. We need to partner up and we need to, uh, to find whether in our industry or beyond our industry, experts and so on uh, to collaborate with. And I think that's an excellent point in this developing area uh, where frameworks and standards are not yet uh, in place that uh, the role of partnerships uh, is, is crucial because we cannot do it alone and fix the biodiversity crisis alone, right? How do you see that play out in the future in terms of collaboration? Uh, so I definitely see it's something that, uh, that we'll be focusing on. We are doing that now. We'll also continue to do it going ahead. So as I said, we're already doing a, uh, having a number of initiatives where we support science, we collaborate with universities, but also experts uh, on, on the field. One specific topic uh, that we're focusing on uh, in our fleet uh, is uh, underwater noise, mm. as I mentioned. And here we are really trying to, uh, to gather experts uh, on the topic and share insights both from our industry, but also uh, with, the, with, other, uh, with other industries, simply to learn and, and make sure that we uh, progress this in the best possible manner to make sure at the end of the day that we reduce um, the impact that we have. And I guess we are also already part of a partnership that is focused on, on cleaning the world oceans for plastic waste, for example, basically picking up pollution in the oceans. 
as part of the Ocean Cleanup Project. So it's not like partnerships are new to us also in this area. Exactly. And I, that has been ongoing for many years, right? We have a lot of initiatives ongoing, a lot of partnerships. So I think it's important that we continue with those and that we, of course, all the time challenge ourselves and look at what are new initiatives we can take on to make sure that we, that we all the time develop and, uh, and also move forward. And then, of course, as mentioned, we need to have this joint um, position and red thread across the initiatives that we take on, ensuring all the time, of course, that it's in line with our decarbonisation ambition and the other priorities we have on the ESG agenda, as you also mentioned. Do you see us having uh, more opportunities to actually uh, mitigate some of the impacts of biodiversity in terms of overconsumption of natural resources uh, in in our business model. So thinking about something like circularity, can we support our customers in developing circular business models that can also uh, positively contribute to? So I think uh, circularity is a uh, super important topic and taps into all the things that we're talking about here. Um, so I think definitely there's a, there's a scope for us here and things that we can do to work with our customers and also support our customers in the journey that they are on on this agenda. So yes, very much agree. And again, I think this goes across all the initiatives that we have. The importance of, uh, of having a dialogue with our customers about it, understanding the challenges that they're experiencing because they are also facing the same challenge that we are and want to take action on it. So I think it's very important that we keep this as part of our, as our integrated business and that we work with our customers on finding the best solution, sharing knowledge and, and moving forward. So uh, another key, uh, key stakeholder group that is uh, keenly interested in how we are performing on biodiversity is our investors. And they are, of course, working on developing their own standards for actually understanding uh, the impacts of companies on biodiversity. I'm thinking here about the framework such as uh, the Task Force for Nature-Related Financial Disclosures that I guess we will also be looking at uh, since investors are a key, key stakeholder group to Maersk. Yeah, for sure. We will uh, definitely... Uh, we are already doing that, uh, and, and just to say that a bit back to the conversation we had before, we are doing this for multiple reasons. We are doing it because it's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and it's part of our commitment to being a new DDX. Yeah. We are doing it because it's important to our customers, to our investors, and to the societies that we are part of. Mm -hmm. So very much agree, and that's something we will continue to focus on. No, no, I think we also already touched upon the uh, sort of the global nature of biodiversity and, and climate and, and how it interacts. I don't know if you want to add a few comments on that. Biodiversity is not something that one company can address or one country. It's something that we need all good forces behind to, to address. It's a topic which is global but also local in nature. And I think this point is also important because there's a lot of things that, uh, that, that we can all do, not just businesses but also societies but also uh, ourselves as, as private individuals. I think one of the things that, that I find inspiring is also some of our colleagues uh, that have done great initiatives on our headquarter location here at Esplanaden mm -hmm. in Copenhagen. And I know that other initiatives are ongoing at our locations in, in many other parts of the world. And I think these initiatives are concrete, they have an impact, but also they, they show the way and create engagement. And I think uh, to me, that's an inspiration, thinking like this, that we all have a role to play. You and me, we can also do things um, at home uh, in all the engagements that we have, right? So I think there's definitely a need for all of us to get engaged and room for it as well. I think we're very noted the call to action on that and, and very much agree to that point. And I think we're coming to an end uh, of this very exciting um, talk here today. I don't know, I will, perhaps I will hand it over to you, Nune, and uh, if you have a few closing remarks. Yes, uh, so first of all, thanks uh, for, like, for inviting me in for this talk. I think to me it, it's clear that biodiversity is still in its early days mm. compared to climate, mm. but it is a topic on the rise because it is a challenge, um, because we can see the impacts on our planet. We need to take action in Maersk as a company, but uh, because of the reasons we, we discussed on how we want to contribute positively to the society that we are part of, it's part of our commitment to being a, a new DVXMHIL. It's also important to our customers and the other stakeholders that we talked about, but we also need to, to show the way. I think Maersk has been a front runner uh, on many topics when it comes to ESG and, and decarbonization. And I think this is one of these topics where it's important that we also show the way, take initiative. We don't have all the answers now. Uh, we need 
collaboration, we need partnerships. We are doing a lot of things already now, and we have been for many years. So I think that's important to say, but we will definitely uh, continue our focus on this and we'll do even more also in the years to come. Thank you very much.